Welcome to Hall Pass, the Virgin Islands Department of Education's exciting talk show highlighting all things education. I'm your host, Jere Ford, and school is slowly coming to an end, but that doesn't mean that we're going to stop learning. Today, we're going to be talking about the 8th Annual Governor's Summer Reading Challenge. But first, let's go to Amari Graham with this week's rundown. Hi, I'm Amari Graham, back with your weekly rundown. The St. Croix Educational Complex Band recently traveled to Disney World in Orlando, Florida to participate in a parade showcasing high school bands from across the country. In addition to the parade, students attended workshops to learn what it takes to work as a professional musician at a theme park. The Charlotte Mali High School and Ivani Dorican High School Unity Choir recently returned from the World Series New York Heritage Festival in New York City with top honors. The Harmonic Race and Hawks Unity Concert Choir, under direction of Ms. Jeanette A. Reimer and Ms. Naomi Toussaint Williams, performed at the festival held at the historic Riverside Church on May 28. The Combined Unity Choir brought home the gold, and the Kent Jazz Choir brought home silver. Congratulations on a job well done, guys. And speaking of music, Dion Parson and the United Jazz Foundation presented complex high school senior Kenesha Webb with a new oboe and a certificate of excellent musicianship at the high school's recent spring concert. Congrats to Kenesha as she pursues a career in music. Big shout out to the Adelita Concrete Junior High School, Phoenix, who are the St. Thomas St. John Interscholastic Junior Varsity Soccer Champions. The team went undefeated this season. Way to go, guys. Well, that's it for me. I am Omar Graham. I'll see you next week here on The Rundown. Back to you, Jure. Thanks, Omari. Like I said, we're going to be talking about summer learning, summer reading. It's the Governor's Summer Reading Challenge. And I have two very special guests to talk all about it with me. We have renowned publisher Mario Picayo, and we have the St. Thomas St. John District Elementary Programs Coordinator, Calamus Maduro. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So before we get started, this is a tradition here. Okay. I need that hall pass. Oh, so whoever holds the pass speaks. They, speaks. Speaks. I got it now. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of want to jump right in, and I want to go sure. to you first, Calamus. Can you tell me about the challenge across the two districts? Well, um, so this is the eighth annual, like you just said, and our students are very excited and anxious to get their books tomorrow. So the challenge starts tomorrow, June 8th, and it ends September 23rd. So all of our students have already received their books along with this lovely letter from the governor of the Virgin Islands, Governor Mapp, and their tracking sheets. So every student is going to receive the letter and a tracking sheet, and these are very fun interactive tracking sheets. So they actually ask questions about the text, they ask questions about reading in general, um, and we just wanted to make it engaging just besides writing down the book title as well as the author of the book and then maybe a little summary. Mm -hmm. So the students are actually going to receive extra credit points as well for the work that they've done once they read five books. They have to read five books and complete the sheet in order to receive the extra credit and then participate in the big celebration in the fall. Okay, so it's, it's going to be a fun thing. It's yes. fun learning. Reading is fun. You know, it's definitely a priority of the governor as well as Commissioner McCollum to get our students reading and to increase literacy. So the Governor's Summer Reading Challenge isn't supposed to be a task. It's supposed to be something that's learn, fun and enjoyable for them. So, for example, one of the questions is... Um, I read at the beach how many times this year? Because you can read anywhere, on your couch, in your bed, in the library, at the beach, just as long as reading is fun for everyone. Okay, great. And so then I want to go to you, Mario, and mm -hmm. I want to ask, can you tell me a little bit about the history of the Governor's Reading Challenge? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, well, the, the Governor's Reading Challenge is an international program. Okay. Didn't begin in the Virgin Islands, mm -hmm. but the Virgin Islands adopted it eight years ago, as Calamis was saying. And so it's, it's, you can find it in most of the states and also in some countries like in England, in Australia, they do it as well. Okay. The, what, what we do different in the Virgin Islands, and this is, I think, makes it very unique, is that not only do the children get encouraged to read books from the library, from internet, whatever they want to read them, but on top of that, this, the governor and the Department of Education of the Virgin Islands creates a series of feature books written and illustrated usually first by Virgin Islanders and by Caribbean people. 
So we, this is the only place that I know of, and I, and I do a lot of research on the program, that makes sure that the children get books that would engage them because they are done specifically for them to talk about their culture, their history, and, their, and the nature around them. So very, very unique and, and an excellent, excellent program. And so what's your role in the whole challenge? And I heard you say that you research and like you've, you've looked at other programs. What's your role here? Well, I, I, I am the publisher right now of the, of the, I have a publishing company, I am the director. So I get a lot of manuscripts every year from authors from all over the Caribbean. I, spec I am from Cuba. I've been here since I was 17, now in and out from New York to St. Thomas. So I know the culture well. And I've been working with different authors. So I, I have a big pool of books and a, a, a big pool of manuscripts. So my role is basically to go through them and try to find the best fit for the children of the Virgin Islands in terms of engagement, in terms of entertaining, educational, that they see themselves in the books and that are uh, age appropriate. And, and that's what we do every year. We, we, and then we match uh, an illustrator to, uh, to an author and the books are created. And that's, that's how the magic and, and, happens. And that's how it happens. Well, Calamus, then I want to know um, if you could speak a little bit more about those tracking sheets that you were just briefly telling. Yeah. Well, so the tracking sheets, there are four different tracking sheets, and they're by grade level. So kindergarten and first grade have their own tracking sheet. Second grade has a tracking sheet. Fourth and fifth have one, and so there's six. So if you notice, the age range of the governor's summer reading challenges from kindergarten all the way to sixth grade. And it's just basically in the front a checkoff sheet or a multiple choice um, answering questions, true and false. And then on the back, they're to write the books that they've read, if they like them, yes or no. And then for our kindergarten and first graders, we have them writing two sentences, because along with literacy, you know, we also have to have that manuscript. Um, so they're writing two sentences, you know, about the, their favorite part of the book, and they're drawing a little picture. Drawing Aww. pictures are always fun. <laughs> um, but for our older children, we just have them, you know, again, the name of the book, did they like it, yes or no, and then they need to write 500 words or more about the text itself. And you'll be surprised at the, the work that comes in from our children. I mean, some parents go above and beyond and they actually have the children bind the books. Um, oh, wow. Some just, you know, bring them in on loose leaf paper. Some children draw pictures even if they don't have to have every single book. Like the students do put a lot of hard work into this. But again, the purpose is to encourage all of our children to read. And like Mario was saying, what I love about these books is, is that they're by Virgin Island authors and even some of the illustrations. I know last year, a lot of our texts were by uh, Virgin Islands writers. And I think, not even think, I know one of our books this year is by your aunt, Dr. Um, Hassel Haptis. Yes. So, you know, our we do great things. So not only are we encouraging children to read, but we're encouraging them to write as well. Because one day, they could be authors of the books for the Governor's Summer Reading Challenge. Oh, that would be awesome. I would <laughs> love to see that. And so these tracking sheets aren't just for them to develop their writing skills, but also to kind of keep a record yes, of, of them the books that they're reading. reading. Yeah. OK. So I want to thank Mario jump into some of these books. Oh, Calamus sure. just sold me on them completely. <laughs> so I want to know. Tell me some of them. Yeah, no, the Calum Calumus enjoys the, the, <laughs> the, the, the challenge. We, we worked together last year. We. It was, it was fun. Um, so some of the books this year, we're very excited about them. And we're going to start with one called Where Did the Baby Go? OK. This, um, Where Did the Baby Go? So you can see. It's going to be given to children in, the, in kindergarten, first grade, and I think it goes to second, if Callum is, if mm -hmm. I'm correct. And it is, they call it a lyrical mystery. As the, as the title says, Where Did the Baby Go? So it is a book where, in rhyme, and with beautiful illustrations that maybe I, maybe I can show them to, I hope that your viewers can see some of the illustrations. Those are gorgeous. All, everything that the children will see in the book, they will, found, they will find in Virgin Islands nature. Whether mm -hmm. it's the birds, whether it's the So it's very the accurate. Fish. Very, very, yes. very accurate, very accurate. It's, uh, it has that, that teaching component about the nature of the Virgin Islands. On top of that, it has the rhyme, and it has also a counting, a counting component as well where at the end of the book, as you can see, they have to see how many sailboats, how many fish, how so many. So some math is snuck in there So some math bit. is also okay. in, there in a fun way. Again, yeah. we, we want to keep them engaging. We want to keep them entertaining at the same way, at the same time as educational. And David and Phyllis Gershader are no strangers to, to the, of course, to, to any child reading in the Virgin Islands. They wrote last year's Kalaloo, which mm -hmm. was a very popular book. Very popular. Yes. They have written the, they, uh, Phyllis was a librarian for over 30 years and has worked for the Department of Education. Local, she's been 
living in the Virgin Islands for over 40 years. And she's a top writer, not just for us in the Virgin Islands, but also internationally. She's, she has over 20, 30 books uh, published by many, many, many large companies. So should I just move on to the yes, next book? Yes, yes, keep, so it, keep it coming. We're gonna show you, this is a little book. Another thing we do is try to match the books to different reading levels and skills. Mm -hmm. So this book might be a little harder to read maybe than this one. A little, this is a this is very first readers. It's called Somos Piratas, We Are Pirates. We also added the bilingual component to this book. Wonderful. English okay. and Spanish. And it's basically about two young readers that decide to imitate their favorite pirate book. And it's a little adventure book um, I'm going to show you. I said, uh, should I continue showing them to yes, you? Yes, yes, They can please. see it there. Okay, so you see it's the children playing their, their imaginary game, and, pre and this is what they think they're doing. So this is their book. And, um, and so it's, it's, it's them thinking that they're pirates. And then there's a little adventure because they need a parent to be real pirates. They go element by element, the patch, the, the, now they have the sword, they have the handkerchief. But, you know, pirates always have a parrot on their shoulder. Of course, you have to have and a parrot. The, and the only pirate they know belongs to the neighbor. So what are they going to do? Pretend that they are pirates without a parrot or that they're going to have to become real pirates and steal the parrot from the neighbor? And, that, and then it has a happy ending. It has a twist on when they attempt to do something. It's so I, I, think it's gonna, it's, I think it's, it's going to be, it's gonna be very, also, I think the kids are going to enjoy it a lot. And the illustrator, as you saw, Amazing. Two completely different styles. Same yeah. illustrator. I mean, one very realistic, the other one, the, the, the children. Again, a boy and a girl. We can all play pirates. Mm -hmm. It's not only a boys' game, and which also we make sure to give that sense to the reader. That what about that book? Doesn't matter. Brown Pelicans. This is going to go to children in um, second, third, and fourth grade. Mm -hmm. okay. it's, it's a new series that we started with this book clo called Close to Nature. And the Close to Nature series is going to be exactly that. It's going to bring children closer to the natural environment of the Virgin Islands. Okay, and so what's it called again? Brown Pelicans. Brown Pelicans. The, the series is called Close to Nature. The book is all about brown pelicans. Okay. So it's a, it's a science book, but again, with a lot of illustrations, very easy to read, and very, very engaging. And you said the engaging. pictures are from? All the photographs were taken in St. Thomas and St. Croix and St. John. Okay. Uh, maps, they, so they understand a little bit more about They got some about geography birds, in there, some, some science. Geography, a lot of science and a lot of fun, fun facts as well. And we even added something that most kids don't know about, which is how to classify, how, what is the classification of living creatures according to science. Okay. Very, we did it in a very, in a very simple diagram, but that one that I hope is engaging. And they, this, is, this is the kind of knowledge that would last my lifetime. If they understand that, it's all of science, whenever they study science, it's going to become a lot easier. Okay, so, so we had the science, and mm -hmm. now some Now we go to your aunt's culture. book. Okay. Now we go to your aunt's book. <laughs> some to, culture. Yeah, to, yeah. To, to Dr. Lois Hassel Hapte's book. And this is, I, we're very, very, we're proud of all the books, but this one is particularly close to, okay. I think, to our heart, because it's another new series that we began with this book called Under the Big Tree. Traditional What's the tales. Name of the book? It's Brunancy and the Tar Baby, Brunancy. which a lot, a lot of your viewers should be Familiar acquainted with. with. Yes, yes. The, the story of Brunancy and the Tar Baby, and the series is going to be a traditional tales of the Caribbean and beyond. And what grade levels are going to be? Reading this is this? going to go from fourth to third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, because we feel that even though the language is simple for mm -hmm. some, the content is complex in many ways, and it also has a. It has a, a, hist a history component where we explain where the story came from, try to put it in today's context, and why a story like that is important. Okay. And this is straight from the, tra from the oral tradition of the Virgin Islands. This is a story by Hector Roebuck, and the language is the, exactly as he told it. So it's in our Virgin Islands Creole, mm -hmm. and the fun, honestly, the fun thing about this book is to read out loud. Mm -hmm. This is a book to read out loud and enjoy and laugh the way that, Dr. that Hector Roebuck used to, used to tell it. So the don't very, spoil it. Don't okay, spoil no, it. No, I'm not. I just no, well. Don't worry. This is just just giving an idea of of, okay, of, the, of, the, of, of the illustrations. Yeah, okay. yeah. So very very important book, and it's it's going to be part of a series next year. We hope to do one with um of a story from Miss Delta Dorsch from Saint Croix. Okay. Also to preserve, and and so that our oral history and our oral tradition doesn't doesn't Keeps die. Going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about uh, this is our last book, our fifth and book. This is this is a book only for this is for fifth and sixth graders. Okay. It's um it's a novel, and even though the main character, the central character is a girl, 
And you know, sometimes they say that boys, and we've had that issue that, oh, sometimes boys, they see a girl on the cover of a book, they don't read it, etc. I'm glad it's gonna go to everybody. Mm -hmm. Because the, city, the, the story would apply to a boy, to a girl, to anyone. The girl's name is Carrie Bell. It takes place in St. Thomas, the whole story, and they'll, they'll find the references all over the, the, the story. And she is a, she's a girl that comes to live with her, like the story of Cinderella in a way. She yeah. comes to live with her father and stepmother and stepbrother and sister. And even though they have told her that if she's a good girl, everything will be fine, she will be accepted, she has the hardest time. And so, so it's a story very engaging also, but very, very, this is, I, th I think almost every kid would enjoy it. I can't wait it's, to see what they say on the tracking oh, sheets about it's, it's like almost, their best Let me tell you, the, the story, the way it is described is almost painful to read sometimes because she makes this character so, so real. You feel for the character. And one important aspect of the book is reading is, is her escape. This little girl, when everything is going as bad as you can imagine in her home, mm -hmm. she reads. And read is the way that she can escape. And the teachers in school. Jerry, is, you is, know if you don't stop Mari, he'll go on. Oh, he'll this go is on. This, right? is this is it. This is it. This is it. This is it. Because okay, this is okay. important, especially for your audience, talking about the Department mm -hmm. of Education. The school is, is her, her oasis. That's where she can, can feel really, she can have a good relation. Her teacher becomes the most important person in her life. Yeah. So again, it's, it's that sense that sometimes how important teachers are, the role model that teachers are and how they can influence your life. So, and this is just the starter kit, right? I mean, they can go and mm -hmm. do read e-books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can find books in the library. Yeah, we encourage everyone to go to the library. Um, they can find books on the internet. And then, you know, once you've read your books, you go to www.read5.org and you actually, you know, read five.org and, you know, get your tracking sheets if you misplaced it or you contact the curriculum center. But the important thing is, you know, the challenge starts tomorrow, June 8th, but it ends the 23rd of September. So the important thing is to fill out your tracking sheets, get them in, whether you turn them into your school librarian or you turn them into the curriculum center, whether it's on St. Croix or it's on St. Thomas, just make sure you get it in because we want to make sure that all the students that has read get to participate in the big celebration this fall. Um, I know last year on the island of St. Croix, we had about 600 students turn in their applications or their tracking sheets, I should say. And then on the island of St. Thomas, St. John, we had 900 plus turn wow. in their tracking sheets. But the sad part about it is that when they do turn in their tracking sheets, and this is where we need the parents to participate, besides signing the bottom of the tracking sheets and dating it just to acknowledge that your child has read, we need you to bring them to the big celebration where they you know, get to celebrate the, the fact that they did something great, which is reading, because remember, we want to make reading fun. And then the children receive certificates. Again, they'll receive the extra credit points. Um, towards their English grade, so it's just important to bring them out because last year even though we had 900 plus applications only 300 children came out So it's, it's a little, mm. you know bittersweet But we encourage the children to come out and every year it's just gonna get bigger and better So the incentives are they get extra points extra they get extra credit points They get uh -huh. to come to a big celebration. Yes. so they get an extra credit little ticket Oh, okay. yeah. So they actually get it, and you know, the governor signs it as well as um, the commissioner of education, Dr. Sharon Ann McCollum, and we put the student's name and their school, and they have to give it to their English teacher. So this was last year's extra credit sheet. Um, they also get a certificate, and then they come to a big party just to celebrate the fact that they read. I, I was at that. That was a good party. <laughs> it was a Let good party. Let me tell you. <laughs> so that alone is the incentive yes. to really. I, it sounds like these books are just so engaging. I mean, mm -hmm. they're filled with culture, and they're not just reading. They involve science, yeah, social studies, math. Yep. Yeah, yeah, just amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I want to know, why is it so important? Maybe I should ask you. Uh, why is it important to read? <laughs> to, to, to do the governor's reading challenge. I mean, we encourage children to read throughout the entire school year. You know, when you open a book, you take a journey somewhere else. You learn new things, and that's the most important part. And again, like I said earlier, the governor, as well as the commissioner of education, Dr. Sharon A. McCollum, you know, they just want to promote literacy. Because, you know, when we read, we go places. And, you know, during the summer, our children aren't as engaged in academics because some of them don't get a chance to go to summer school. So they're home and they're, you know, not doing much except for playing and we don't want to lose the knowledge that we have. So it's just important to read, 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 read five or more this summer. Yeah. Okay, no, what about you, Mario? No, that, that summer drain that happens 
for the children that yeah. don't read throughout the summer. Every September, the, the teachers have to reverse that, mm -hmm. what they lose from not, not reading. And yes. of course, better readers make better students. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a logical component, I think, of, of the school system to keep the kids engaged throughout the summer with reading, especially when the reading is fun. Yeah. And the best part about this is that every single child in the territory is getting, are getting these books. So a teacher can actually take a book and turn it into a lesson when they come back from summer vacation because all the children receive the same books. Um, so it's kind of like a cheat sheet for the teacher too. So everybody, no. everybody's <laughs> beneficial in this. Everybody is benefiting in and, this. And, and also the fact that because it, the, so many of the authors are local, mm -hmm. we also have role, local role models. You know, that whole concept that almost everything that is cultural has to come from abroad almost because we get so many movies, television, books yeah. that come from somewhere else. It's almost telling the children you can be a writer, you don't have to leave. We have writers here. Those, those, those writers, me included, I have written some of the Summer Reading Challenge titles as well. Always happy to go to a school, talk to the students about writing, about illustrating, mm -hmm. giving that extra, extra dimension to the books that you will not get from a book that, where you cannot meet the author. So, and for the kids, it's always a great experience to meet somebody that actually wrote a book. And it sounds like, especially uh, you were talking about one of the books, I can't remember which one, maybe you can tell me how it's best to read it out loud. So maybe the pairings or some family members, it could be a gathering where they read. That is, that is another strong element of the series, that it should be read out loud, that I think it also encourages the parents, the language, and most of them. Which was it's, the it's one a, that you were the, telling the, me Brunancy about? Brunancy and the Tar Baby, because it does come from our oral tradition. So it is a book that is meant to read out, to read out loud. To the point that if you see, and this I'm going to show the audience, and I'm going to show on the last page, we're going to show on one of the early pages. <laughs> you see that we kept the illustrations very, very simple. The big tree, that's it, the text, and then here some explanations in case some readers don't understand our, our Virgin Islands Creed. Yeah, we, he we self to give himself. Can you read a little piece of it for me? Actually, Just I, a little I, I was going to have, actually, we're going to have columnists <laughs> no, read, read a little. Oh, you're going to put her on the spot. <laughs> no, gonna, he's not. That's, that's, that's <laughs> what, we, we work back and forth. Come on, you can do it. Or, or maybe you as a, as the. Uh, I liked it when you said I, Calamus. I, I, think, I think, come on, Okay, Calamus. come Calamus. One page. You can come read a little something for us. One page. Lord help us. Yes. <laughs> Read the first, start it from the beginning if you want. That's the easiest just, way. Just give me a little, a yes, little yes, snippet. Yes. Yes. I don't know, you know, I was in the States a little while, so. Oh, come oh, on. So you read from the first page. Why not? Okay. And as he getting ready to eat his carrots, who's this? Brunancy jerked it out his hand and it went straight down the hatch. So I guess you have to read it with like a little St. Thomas twang. You oh, have okay. to. Or crucian. Oh, Krujan. <laughs> well, who, who can read it with a Krujan twang? <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, I'm a Tomian, I guess. He wanted more, so Brunancy sent his next son up to his uncle to ask for a match, to light the piece of wood, to start a fire, and cook some food. We're going to give them too I'm gonna, much. I'm going to clap for you. Let's <laughs> clap for <laughs> so I'm the spot I'm now. Anyway, so, so we kept the style very simple so that the kids can imagine the story. We didn't want to give him every, every image of, an aunt, of a Brunancy and the tar baby and all the details. Let him, let him listen to it. Even yeah. if they read it, let him imagine what's happening. Better than see it as in other illustrated books. So we took that very seriously, the fact that it is from the oral tradition, and we want to almost keep it that way. Yeah, I mean, this book, as, as well as um, Kalalu from last year's Governor's Summer Reading Challenge, it actually brings some of our children back to the tradition. You know, just remembering the dialect and, you know, too often you hear our parents say, you know, make sure you're speaking proper. But, you know, we have to remember, too, that from the Virgin Islands, we do have our own accent and our mm -hmm. own dialect that we mm -hmm. present. And these books definitely bring that out. Yeah, it, it is a way to also show kids that, yeah, that they don't speak bad English. Mm -hmm. that, yes. is, that is not, that is that they speak the English of where they are from. Yeah. The same way that Antigua has their own. Cuba has its own accent, so, which is very Cuban, the same way as Dominican Republic with our own words. And every U.S. state has their own right, accent right, as well. So, yeah, yeah. so, so, so it's it, teaching a little bit about cultural yeah. pride. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's the language of my parents, my grandparents, my friends, my, my community. But then in school they're going to tell me it is not, not all schools, of course, and not all teachers, but sometimes I do hear that that still happens. So, I mean, so there's a time and a place when to speak proper and mm -hmm. not. So again, like the Brown Pelican, it takes them more back to the history and, you know, speaking proper and writing in complete mm -hmm. sentences the way you should. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit of 
a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any last minute information that you really want the viewers to know about, about the Governor's Reading Challenge, like maybe dates, what they need to get ready for? I mean, the most important thing is open a book and read. Read five or more this summer. They can visit www.read5.org. Uh, the challenge begins tomorrow, so they have their books in their hand, and you're not limited to the, to the books that the department has given you. You can read books from anywhere, whether it's from in your closet, you know, go to the library, read books online, e-books, just make sure you write them down. Have your parents sign this um, tracking sheet, and then the challenge ends September 23rd. Yeah. Okay. No, I, no, I think the idea is that that's why they get two books, they don't get five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We, the Department of Education, gives them two to open that door. Let them also explore. It's an appetizer. All the, all, exactly. Yes. All the, explore all the, all the titles. Maybe you like all the types of books that these are not the ones, but, but at least that's, that's an opening. And some children will be receiving two and some will be receiving one. So it just depends on the grade level or, you know, just, just the amount of books you're receiving. And are there going to be different events throughout the summer? incorporating the Governor's Reading Challenge? I mean, we'll try our best, but I know mostly what goes on is that we have different authors go out and read their books, or people from the community just go from camp to camp reading books to the children to encourage them. Again, it doesn't matter what you read, just pick up a book and read. And these tracking sheets are extremely important. They are extremely important. So if some of the questions don't apply to, um, some of the questions apply only to the books that they were given. However, on the back, again, you write the name of the story, whether you liked it or not, and then a summary. So okay. they can write a summary about any book that they read. Okay. Well, I would like to thank both of you guys for no coming and letting us no. know. I mean, I am so blown away by the books um, but it seems like our time has passed, <laughs> our hall pass has expired. It's all the time we have for today. I'm so sorry, but stay tuned next week on Hall Pass. I'm Jere Ford.